right. Uh, due to uh, the latest news on the Sladikov case, we're expecting you uh, can reveal some of the details of it. So proceedings in the Sladikov case were initiated many years ago in addition to procedural issues. Uh, what are the reasons led to such a long consideration? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, we've had the pleasure of representing the city of Almaty and BTA Bank for um, going on six years now as part of the legal proceedings in the United States. Uh, and they have taken quite a long time, and there are a number of reasons for that. Uh, part of the reason is that U.S. legal proceedings take some time because there is a, a robust um, discovery period during which parties can obtain evidence and testimony from one another and from third parties. Uh, part of the reason is that the case is enormously complicated. Um, you know, th this case involves the efforts by Mukhtar Abliezov and Elias Krapanov and others to steal and launder billions of dollars throughout the world. And they used hundreds and, and perhaps thousands of shell companies and bank accounts to do so. So finding all that evidence and unraveling the crimes um, took quite an effort. And of course, um, they did not make it easy for us. So Avliezov, Ilyas Krapunov, his father, Viktor Krapunov, took steps at every turn to conceal and destroy evidence. And that prolonged the proceedings. Um, but, but ultimately, we've been able to find what we need. And we look forward to presenting this evidence to a jury of New Yorkers. Mm -hmm. So could you share some details about the flat at all? Uh, what is this project? What is the situation with it today? And can you clarify why this particular project wants to arouse the interest of Ablaza and the company? The flat hotel itself is uh, a real estate development in the heart of New York City and Manhattan. It's near Times Square, Madison Square Garden, and a number of... Uh, famous landmarks in New York City. It used to be a hotel, and uh, about 10 years ago, they started a development project to turn it into luxury apartments, multi-million dollar apartments in New York City. Um, the project, the construction is complete, and those apartments are now for sale to the public. Um, and we believe that um, Abliezov and the Krapanovs uh, used the Flatatel to launder tens of millions of dollars that were stolen from BTA Bank and Almaty, uh, really for two reasons. One is that it was uh, a real estate project that required a lot of money, um, and it's, it's well known that real estate is uh, a place where um, criminals can launder funds, and there's no shortage of, of cases uh, involving that sort of misconduct. And in this case, um, Ilyas Krapunov was introduced to the developer of the project, a man by the name of Shatrit, who was happy to take their money and, and happy not to ask too many questions. And so it was a good combination of them wanting to put dirty money into an investment in the United States and the developer being happy to take that dirty money. Mm -hmm. So as you have already mentioned about the site of Ablazov Krapunov accomplices destroyed some uh, evidence, forensic evidence and proof, or what is it about? How important documents uh, were lost and uh, in what way? So will there be enough other remaining evidence and would it be enough, would it be enough for the jury? Uh, what documents or documents form the basis of the evidence now. So, you know, of course, we can never know um, what evidence was destroyed by uh, Krapanov or, or hidden by Abliezov and Krapanov. But the judge in New York City uh, determined that they both refused to provide evidence that they were required to turn over and found that Ilias Krapanov in particular had uh, destroyed relevant evidence, uh, including um, emails and other documents, including having an entire email server deleted. Um, and we were able to prove that 
by obtaining some of those documents from third parties. So uh, from the person, for example, that he was emailing with. So we were able to prove that he had destroyed relevant evidence uh, and the judge found that and issued sanctions against him and his father and against uh, Mr. Avliezov. Uh, and that, that evidence would definitely have been helpful, uh, but there is no shortage of evidence of their crimes. And we've been able to obtain evidence from third parties, We've been able to obtain testimony from numerous people that helped Avliezov and the Krapanovs commit these crimes and launder money. Um, and we presented it to the court in a decision that was released earlier this year. The judge presiding over the case uh, reviewed the testimony of those witnesses and documentary evidence and found that there was significant evidence to support, support PTA's claims and that there was virtually no evidence to support the defendant's cover story. And that's why we're going to have a trial. Mm -hmm. So there was information that we asked Krapan of deliberately concealed information about the uh, whereabouts of a key witness in this case. Uh, who are we talking about and how important uh, was the witness and were you able to find to him in, in that? So the, the two witnesses that... Um, Ilyas Krapanov concealed throughout many years of the U.S. proceedings were um, a man named uh, Gennady Patelin and a man named Frank Monstry. Monstry was the, uh, the CEO of an oil and gas company that Abliezov had invested in, and he sent uh, $440 million into a bank in Cyprus to help Abliezov launder that stolen money from BTA. Uh, Pichelin is actually related by marriage to Abliezov and the Krapanovs, uh, and he is someone that uh, they have held out as being the legitimate front person for their family's money. They say that he is um, uh, an oil and gas billionaire from his time in Russia, even though there's no proof of that, even though his wife didn't know that she was married to a billionaire. Uh, even though that Ilyas Krapanov concealed both of those witnesses and their whereabouts, we were able to track them both down. We were able to get them to provide testimony under oath. And that testimony is part of the evidence that the judge considered in issuing that decision earlier this year and setting the case for trial. Mm -hmm. In connection with the information about numerous violations or by uh, the ablaze of Krapanov accomplices, can we expect the court to take this fact into account. Uh, could there be, for example, additional punishment for them for contempt of court or hiding evidence and what kind of it? Yes, the, the, the magistrate judge has already found that Abliezov and the Krapanovs are in contempt of her prior orders. Uh, in the Krapanovs case, actually, Ilyas has been held in contempt two times. The first time, was for violating a court order about the confidentiality of evidence when he leaked uh, the deposition transcript, the transcript of the testimony of uh, BTA's um, current owner uh, into the public for media purposes. And that's, that's been their strategy is not really to fight in court where they have no defense, but rather to fight in the media where they can uh, tell lies that can't be uh, responded to directly. But Ilias was held in contempt for leaking that transcript. And then he was held in contempt again for destroying evidence and refusing to provide evidence, including, as I said, concealing witnesses, hiding um, email accounts and addresses that he had used. He used uh, numerous, numerous uh, fake or dummy email accounts. A lot of them were named after Star Wars characters. Apparently he's a fan. Um, and he, he didn't provide any of that as he was required to. And he also deleted some emails that he used in email servers. Um, similarly, Abliezov was held in contempt uh, and sanctioned for refusing to provide evidence that he said he had, um, but that he refused to turn over to us in, the, in that discovery process. And the court has uh, not only issued sanctions against them, but has required uh, all of them to pay an additional fine to uh, our clients because of that misconduct, because it, it has made the proceedings take longer and, and be more expensive. Mm -hmm. 
is now in about the frozen tens of, of my millions of dollars. So this information was repeatedly announced in the media. Uh, so what with this money now and what will happen at the end of the process? That, that's right. Um, very early on in the case, we were able to identify an asset that uh, Abliazov and the Kropanovs were not yet able to take out of the United States, which had been their pattern. They were trying to get all the assets they had out of the United States so that they couldn't be frozen. We were able to identify an asset at the Flat Hotel and froze it. And that was one of our earliest victories in this case, was convincing the court that we were likely to win the entire case. And so the judge ordered um, what's now approximately $23.5 million US frozen in an account. And that's being supervised by a, a former judge, a retired judge, and it will go to the winner of the of the case after trial. So how long can for the hearing take? And what does the practice of such trials say? One can have it can expect the finale of the judicial story. So the, the trial itself is scheduled to begin on February 7th of next year. Um, and, you know, we're very hopeful that that date will hold. Of course, the COVID pandemic may change things. Uh, but assuming that we go forward on February 7th, uh, the trial itself will last about three weeks, during which we will present evidence and arguments to a jury of New Yorkers. And at the conclusion of the evidence and arguments, they will immediately render their verdict and decide who has won the case. Um, and so th that we expect will happen at the end of February, or early March of next year. Now, of course, uh, the losing party will still have the ability to, to make motions and file appeals to prolong the proceedings, and that could take substantial additional time. Um, but assuming that we are successful at trial, and I believe we will be, that should not prevent our clients, for example, from getting the money that's been frozen in the United States in the meanwhile. Thank you. We'll follow on the story. Um, thank you, Mr. Schwartz, for information and your comment on the in this question. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.